as a representative of his own civilization, has always been interested in the unknown and unexplored. This desire has been the driving force behind countless achievements and discoveries, leading to an era when establishing contact with alien civilizations no longer seems like a fantasy. The reasons for this can be varied and far-reaching. First is our inherent need for communication and connection. Turning to extraterrestrial life is an extension of our desire to realize that we are not alone in the vastness of the universe. Second, the discovery of other civilizations can give us insight into different forms of socio-cultural and technological entities. It may also contribute to progress that will lead us to numerous technological advances in astronomy, physics and other sciences in other sciences. The prospect of meeting new civilizations pushes us to develop innovative ways to search and communicate over cosmic distances. The realization that we live in the universe with other forms of intelligent life may encourage us to take a more universal view of the world, freeing us from the idea that we are alone in the universe. Speaking of civilizations, it is impossible not to mention the explanation of Soviet Russian expert in the field of experimental and theoretical astrophysics, Nikolai Kardashev, who in 1964 proposed an innovative scale of civilization known today as the Kardashev scale. This scale was originally developed as a method of measuring the level of technological development of a civilization, in particular, the ability of a civilization to use and manage energy. The Kardashev scale includes three types of civilizations, but today this scale has expanded and types of civilizations are now six. We propose to briefly consider these types and then discuss how realistic it is to meet representatives of at least one of them in the solar system our galaxy and throughout the universe. So, civilization of the first type, often called planetary civilization, is able to use all the resources available on its home planet, control weather, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural phenomena. It can also utilize some of the energy the planet receives from its star. Very often, this stage of development becomes a trap for a civilization as it enters a state of self-sufficiency, directing resources to virtual development instead of further expansion. Many civilizations of this type cease to exist due to catastrophic changes in the native star, turning it into a new or supernova star, which makes this type doomed. And yet humanity is not yet a type one civilization. We are at about the level we are only about 30% short of development. This suggests that we consume only 0.17% of the planet's total energy potential. We are expected to reach level one in about 1200 years, depending on how fast our technology advances. But there is a high probability that civilizations that have not yet reached level one will self-destruct in the process of transitioning to the new level of development and one must admit that humanity is doing a great job. A type I, I civilization, also known as a stellar civilization, takes it a step further by harnessing not only the energy of its home planet, but the entire energy of its star. Hypothetically, this could be accomplished using technology such as a Dyson Sphere, a massive structure capable of encompassing a star and capturing most of its energy. Such a sphere would be able to control the orbits of all planets in the solar system, collect asteroids and comets in its spare time. But its main purpose is to consume the star's energy in maximum quantities. Most likely, this type of civilization has developed to such an extent that there is already a great chance to carry out interstellar travel and colonize planets in other star systems. Civilizations of the second type have survived their youth, have overcome turbulent times, and the chances of continuing their development increase dramatically at this point. A civilization of the third type 
or galactic civilization of the third type, or galactic civilization further expands its energy control. Such a civilization can harness the energy of an entire galaxy, including not just one star, but hundreds of billions of stars. Such a civilization will encompass its home galaxy, colonizing and controlling numerous star systems. It would be able to harness the energy of all the stars in the galactic cluster. Such a civilization will also use planets and their satellites as building blocks. It can move planets with their inhabitants from one star system to another, merge stars, absorb the energy of supernovae, and even create stars on its own. The galaxy becomes a huge platform for the life of the third type of civilization. Such civilizations must exist for at least several million years. To reach such a level of development requires the unification of many species of intelligent beings into a single whole as described by many science fiction writers. But the fourth type of civilization is able to use a huge amount of available energy of galactic superscalings. Such a supergalactic civilization has everything it needs to travel across the universe. The society of superbeings will be capable of projects of forbidden possibilities, such as manipulation of space-time, prevention of entropy, which will allow to achieve real immortality in the broadest sense. On the one hand, such a civilization is indestructible. But on the other hand, it is utopian. A civilization of the fifth type it is assumed, will be able to access all available energy of the universe and even go beyond it, embracing countless parallel worlds and learning to manipulate the very structure of reality, changing some aspects of the physics of the physics of the physics of the universe. And finally, a civilization of the sixth type. It will be able to boldly harness the energies of multiple universes, alter their physics, and even prevent heat death to exist forever. Such a civilization exists outside of time and space and is even capable of creating other universes and destroying them just as easily. This is similar to the concept of a deity where God could be one representative of a type six civilization. This description of civilizations is followed by a natural question. Well, where are they all? Why don't we observe any traces of intelligent extraterrestrial life, such as probes, spaceships, or radio signals? This was the same question posed by physicist Enrico Fermi. His reflections on the silence of the universe formed the basis of Fermi's paradox. The lack of visible traces of activity of alien civilizations that should have spread throughout the universe over billions of years of its development Humanity has been searching for extraterrestrial intelligence for decades. Despite the technological leap and boundless optimism, we have yet to find a single living green man. But why? For one thing, the universe is incomprehensibly vast. It is estimated to be about 93 billion light years in diameter, with at least 100 billion galaxies. Each of these galaxies may contain millions to trillions of stars. Looking for civilizations in this cosmos is like looking for one particular grain of sand on the world's largest beach, even if the grain of sand has a navigation system. Second, time is another serious opponent in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Civilizations could have arisen and died millions of years before us, or they could have failed to appear millions of years after we disappeared. Our existence may simply not coincide with the existence of other civilizations on the cosmic timescale, making contact with them highly unlikely. Third, communication with other civilizations is burdened by vast cosmic distances. Any signal we transmit or receive can take hundreds, thousands or even millions of years to reach its destination. By the time the signals reach us or them, 
civilizations may have disappeared or evolved into forms beyond our comprehension. Fourth, they may not communicate in ways we can detect. Civilizations far beyond our level of development may be communicating using technologies undetectable by our current methods or on frequencies we have yet to explore. At this point, our level of communication is nothing more than Morse code. Moreover, they may deliberately conceal their existence, and they prefer not to interfere with life on Earth, but only to watch everything that happens, which is another horror movie. Finally, the Great Filter Theory suggests that there is a good chance of civilization extinction before they reach interstellar capabilities. This could happen either by their own catastrophes such as nuclear wars or by natural disasters due to, for example, asteroid impacts. If this is the case, it means that we may have no counterpart in the cosmos and that we have yet to encounter our own great filter. How would we, even theoretically, be able to recognize or detect such an advanced civilization? After all, their technology if such a technology exists, is something that our current theories can hardly describe, and our instruments would certainly not be able to detect. Its possibilities would contradict the scientific laws we know. For example, the idea of a Type 6 civilization, while attractive, presents us with many problems, technological, scientific, philosophical, and, of course, observational. The logic of detection definition, and even existence itself becomes blurred at this scale. Yes, finding another intelligent civilization in the universe is an extremely difficult task. But despite all these obstacles, humanity continues to search for extraterrestrial intelligence, fueled at least by curiosity. For now, the universe seems silent. But as technology advances and the search continues, we may someday find answers to our questions.